In this class, we are going to learn how to create the custom functions in Oracle Integration 3. Suppose if you have a requirement wherein the functions which are available in Oracle Integration like the functions available in the mapper for advanced, boolean, conversion, date, integration, cloud, so and so forth things are not what you are looking for for your use case. Then you can create the custom function exclusively for your business need with the help of JavaScript in Oracle Integration 3. And the concept is known as libraries. Before going ahead with the hands on and see how we can create or build our own library in Oracle integration, we will have a walkthrough on the documentation on using JavaScript libraries in integration. I am here in the official documentation page by Oracle on using integrations in Oracle integration 3. From the table of content, we need to go to use JavaScript libraries and integration. Oracle has documented each and every information regarding the libraries in this document. You can have a look at this. Our focus of interest is this section that is writing a JavaScript. So JavaScript is providing an alternative to using the mapper and the assign action in order to enrich the data. As I told, the functions which are available as part of the mapper or similarly you can make use of the functions in assign activity as well as in the data stitch as well. So the inbuilt function which comes out of the box with Oracle integration doesn't solve your business need. You can build your own function with the help of JavaScript. So here you can leverage the capabilities and strengths of JavaScript as there are n number of libraries available and the construct is very easy to use with the help of JavaScript programming language. Now there are few syntaxes over here which you need to follow even though this syntax looks good from the JavaScript point of view. You have to explicitly declare your returning variable. Now here we can directly return param1 plus param2 as per the JavaScript syntax. You won't find this any issue with this syntax. But when you return anything, you have to return the named parameter over here, like return a parameter, not directly the expression you have to return. So this is the right way of coding a library or a function in Oracle Integration 3 as per the SDK, which is documented by Oracle here in this document. Let me copy this over here by clicking on this copy button and switch over to the notepad. You can use any VS Code tool or any tool which supports programming language for this use case. I am using just a plain notepad over here. Click on save. Now what we have to do is you have to go to integration instance. Let me just go back from here. Go back. There is this section called as libraries which we have not touched in this course so far. Now we have to click on this import button on the right top corner. Here we can drag and drop our file in this section or we can just click on this and choose the file. So only supporting file formats are zip, jar and the JS file. So we will learn JS as well as jar. So zip you will get when you export any library. So we can import this library with the help of .zip. Now let me just click on this drag and drop. Switch over to the downloads. I am having this function saved in the downloads. Select this. Click on OK. Now if you want to change the function's name, we can change it over here. I don't want to change the function's name. I will keep this as is. So suppose if you want to change this to library, you can do that as well. Then click on import. Now when you click on import, it will list all the functions which are available as part of the file. Now, one file can have n number of functions. Now, let me select this one. I want this to be enabled. It will tell how many parameters you have. In our function, we are having two input parameters that is param1 and param2 and one is the output parameter that is return value, RAT value. So, all are of type string and the supported format of variables is boolean number and string and the same applies for input variable as well. Click on save. So, once done, click on backwards. Now let me just remove here the filter. Here if you see, we are having this function that is functions library. Now similarly, we can create n number of functions in the same file. Let me change this value to function add 0, 1 or 1 simply. Let me go to the documentation page. What we will do is we will copy a function over here. So if you look at this documentation, Oracle has created few extensions for this JavaScript library which you can leverage in order to solve the use case like UUID function check some functions available like you can make use of the hashing algorithm 512-256 bits, MD5, all those are cryptography, base 64 encode, decode you can do as well as the cryptography that is HMAC SHA 256. Usually when you interact with the cloud applications, you will use this HMAC 256 functions. Let me just copy this over here and paste. Also, I will copy a few other functions as well like base 64 encode, decode. Let me copy and paste it over here. Just let me rename this function so that our functions appear to be unique when we import. Save this. Let me go back to this instance. Click on import. Click on this drag and drop and select this function again. If you want to name this, we can name. I will name this as 02. Click on import. 
Now here it is saying we are have four functions as part of this library. Let me select everything and it will show you what is the input and the output parameters available. Click on save. Now we have imported two libraries or created two libraries and they are having collectively five functions. In one library we are having one, two, three, four function and the first library what we have created it is having one function to add the parameters. Now let us go back to our integration. I have created this integration. Let me just edit this in order to demonstrate the use case. Now we can access the JavaScript library functions which you have imported from assign activity from the mapper as well as from the data stitch. So wherever you can see these functions. If you scroll down, you see this user defined function over here. Now what we can do is I have created this integration to expose our REST protocol. It is accepting two input parameters and one output. Let me just create a target node over here. Enable the developer mode. Now I will drag this add over here and I will drop input parameters. Input 1 and the input 2. Now what this function will do is it will add the two numbers like input 1 and input 2. Let me just validate this. It's validated. Click on this test over here. Click on the generate inputs. Here in the request I will put here input 1 as 2, input 3 as 3. Click on run. So we cannot test this over here at the design time environment. So we will validate this mapper. Similar like how I have dragged this add function over here. You can drop the decode, encode, so and so forth things and you can pass the parameters at runtime. So this is how we can make use of JavaScript functions in the mapper. So suppose if you want to directly call the JavaScript function, there is a separate action available over here. If you just scroll down in the actions, there you will find the JavaScript under call. Just drag and drop it over here. When you drag and drop, it will ask you to select the function. So it will list all the functions which we have imported in this instance. Click on this add one and click on param one. So it will ask you to drop the mapping for this. I will click drag and drop for param one. That is the input one coming to param two. I will drag and drop this input two over here. Once done, click somewhere in the screen like this. Click on save. Similar like this, you can make use of the assign action over here. Assign and we can create one assign action. Let me just create. If you want to rename, you can just rename by clicking on this edit symbol. Let me just click on this plus and create one variable v output. Done. In the value, what I will do is I will remove this art coding. Under the functions, I will drop this user defined add one over here. Then for the param1, what I will do is I will remove this by default param1, param2, expand the request and drop the input1 in param1, input2 in param2. Then that's it. Click on somewhere in the screen outside so that it will create the variable for us. Click on save. Now I will close this class. Until then, I will activate this integration and resume from the testing window. I am here in the testing window for the JavaScript function. So in the input one, I will I have provided the learning and in input two, I have provided BNUM. Let me just run this. Now, if you see the JavaScript function, which I have dropped with the help of JavaScript action in the pipeline. So here the transformation is learning and space BNUM. It is returning as our input one is learning input two is BNUM. So if we return says we will get the BNUM learning. So in the request, whatever we have sent, it will map to the function with the help of JavaScript action. So similar like this, we will have the transformation done in the assignment as well as in the mapper. So this is how we can create a JavaScript function in integration. We had seen how we can import multiple function as part of the single library like we have imported like this. We had seen how to make use of these functions within the mapper, how we can call the functions in the assign action, how we can call these functions with the help of JavaScript action which comes with the integration 